Marina and I were planning what we wanted to do. We went to New York and we talked to people at Carnegie Hall about it. We were talking about bringing great musicians and selecting some unusual pieces that are rarely heard in South Florida. And then when mainly Mozart Festival came to us and said, would you be interested in carrying on this tradition? We saw that as an opportunity to see what we could do. Our real goal was to perpetuate this wonderful art form and to continue the tradition of chamber music. At the same time, we also wanted to push the boundaries. We, we want to bring a more diverse programming uh, that will appeal to the energies of a younger audience. And, and I think one way to do it is to present it in a different way. The real question that Mike and I asked ourselves was, how can we truly and meaningfully engage our audience through this wonderful and timeless music? The audiences have changed quite dramatically over the last few decades. Look at our attention spans. They're much shorter. Think about the amount of visual information that we get on a daily basis. It's so much more than any time in human history. We knew that we were bringing together great musicians from all over the country. In our first concert, Eli Matthews is a violinist from the Cleveland Orchestra, Joshua Roman, who's one of the rising international stars as a cellist, and Marina Radishina, who's our artistic director on the piano. This particular concert is centered around the idea of composer's creativity. So we decided to commission six short films, which serve the purpose of visual program notes. And in each one of those short films, we tell a story. And exactly as a good program note would do, these short pieces provide a backdrop for the audience to really imagine and takes them to the composer's world. And we brought in Frank Cooper, who's like an encyclopedia of music. Creativity has been understood in very different ways for very long time. Moscow, 1978. The Soviet machine seems as strong as ever. There is no indication yet that only a little more than a decade later, life for millions of people is going to change drastically. In 1978, the Russian composer of German and Jewish descent, Alfred Schnitke, lived in a small apartment in a typical Soviet building complex. In this apartment, he wrote his first cello sonata. In the compositional process itself, there is something unexplainable. I feel that some ideas were given to me, he wrote. They are not from me. I feel that someone leads me by a string. I am just fixing what I hear. It's not me who writes my music. I am just a tool, a transmitter. on the program is called Spiegel im Spiegel, it's for violin and piano, by an Estonian composer, Arvo Pärt. His music is extremely spiritual. Uh, he's actually a practicing Russian Orthodox. However, his music has an ability to really connect to anyone because it's so human. Mozart was most famous for the speed of his composition and that he amazingly almost never had any sketches. Interestingly, Mozart himself says that composition was not that easy for him.
In the second half of the program, we go to different time and different countries. We have Leo Janacek from Czech Republic, Manuel de Falla, Spanish composer. The pieces that I chose from these two composers were actually written in the same year, 1914. 1914 saw the beginning of the Great War, the First World War, and both compositions were influenced by this important world event. In Nana, a lullaby, Defaya goes to the mind of a mother comforting her child during the turbulent times, as she says. Go to sleep, child, sleep. Sleep, my soul. Go to sleep, little star of the morning. La la lullaby, la la lullaby. Sleep, little star of the morning. The Great War eventually ended. Years of destruction and tragedy prepared the road for happiness and the explosion of creativity that was to come. People wanted to discuss the arts, the new fashions, music, and attitudes. Paul Schoenfield's dazzling tongue-in-cheek cafe music takes us back to that decadent and rebellious time when people were looking for change and freedom. With its dazzling virtuoso chamber manner, cafe music embodies the spirit of the 20s with a desire to be true, to be alive, even to shock, to move, to entertain, and to dance. One of the elements that we wanted to include was some dance. We wanted to give a local choreographer an opportunity. We identified Adriana Piercy. Adriana is a member of the core of Miami City Ballet, one of the great companies in the country and the world. And she had access to the dancers. So what we've got here is we've got great dancers who are with the Miami City Ballet, a young choreographer who probably never would have gotten an opportunity to play with the greatest musicians in the world in this concert. And that's exactly what we wanted to do.
Chamber Music Society is all about first class performances. It is about creative programming. And it is about making sure that our audiences are continuously engaged and would like to come back. This concert represents many of the goals that we had when we decided that we had something different that we wanted to bring to South Florida.